Okay, welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about mountain bike lights and in particular the Lifeline Parvo Motion 2400 and the 900. So going back to last year, um, having gotten into mountain biking quite deeply and riding as much as possible, the end of the year came and I left it too late to get myself some uh, mountain bike lights basically. Obviously, as everyone knows, uh, last year almost everything bike related sold out due to the pandemic and people being at home and you know all of the usual stuff. So I missed my opportunity last year to get out on a night ride. This year, uh, summer, end of summer came or was coming up and I took the opportunity to purchase a couple of lights. So not wanting to uh, spend fortunes on lights, but also not wanting to get, have a crappy rubbish experience, shall we say, by buying cheap lights, potentially. Um, I went for something kind of middle ground, and they are from Chain Reaction Cycles, and they are, like I said at the start of the video, the Lifeline Parvo Motion 2400, which is the bigger handlebar mounted light, and the Parvo Motion uh, 900 which is the helmet light. Both of them can be used um, they have the same mount so both can be swapped around you could run a bigger one on your helmet and the smaller one on your bars if you'd want to do that I don't know why you would because the weight difference is quite noticeable so off-road uh, trail riding lights are a great idea for extending the hours that you can ride your bike in uh, and obviously with the winter months coming short dark cold days um, you know, sometimes you have to get out when it's dark, after work, uh, or whenever. So in this video, I'm going to start off by giving a brief spec or rundown of the specs on both the lights. Then I'm going to show you some footage uh, that I've recorded on the GoPro of me riding with the lights. And at the end of the video, I'll go through the things I like about these two lights and the things that I'm not so keen on. So starting off with the Parvo Motion 2400. Um, currently on Chain Reaction Cycles for £149.99. It's not your cheapest light, but it's by far, <laughs> far from your most expensive. Some lights are uh, ranging at around about £400. So at £150, £149.99, it's quite good value for money, I think. Uh, despite it saying 2400 unless you use it on the motion setting, the maximum lumens are 2000 on the output on the permanent uh, brightness mode. And on that setting, the battery life is a claimed one hour 50 minutes and if you drop it down to the low setting it's claimed you can get 12 hours of battery life it has a five hour charge time from fully empty and the weight of the light as well as the clamp and or mount to your bars is 300 grams moving on to the Parvo Motion 900 this light is currently on chain reaction cycles for 59.99 it has a max uh, output of 720 lumens on the permanent brightness setting which again lasts 1 hour 50 minutes on the maximum setting and at 100 lumens on the minimum setting it can last 12 hours so it's nice that the two lights uh, supposedly match each other in terms of uh, the duration of their light output and the Parvo 900 weighs in at 145 grams including the mount attachment so here's some clips of my first uh, night ride session with these lights So fast forward a few months and I've now changed the GoPro settings. As you can see, the footage is a lot clearer um, and also I'm riding with a mate, which is much better for your nighttime riding experience. So yeah, really enjoyed this night ride, getting out, exploring uh, some unfamiliar trails and really making the most of what the off-road lights are capable of. Okay, so let's go over the things that I like about these lights. Now, first and foremost for me, I wanted lights that were an all-in-one design. I didn't want wires trailing and separate battery packs that I'd have to attach to the bike. I just wanted a slim, uh, the neat kind of profile that these lights offer. 
Uh, like I said earlier, I did not want to spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds on lights that potentially I might not use that often, if at all, um, after the first couple of goes, of course. Uh, I think most people are probably in that kind of boat where they'd like to try night riding, they want to, they want to have the best experience, however they don't know if they're going to necessarily do it on a regular thing and it's hard to justify spending hundreds and hundreds of pounds um, if it's on something you're not going to use very often. So interestingly, although these two batteries are obviously different in size, the smaller one takes an extra hour to charge from fully empty, six hours versus five hours using the same charger and the same charging lead, which is kind of strange. Uh, I've not tested this, tested this, but this is what Lifeline claim themselves. So yeah, who knows whether that's true or not. Again, it's not really an issue. With the Parvo 900, you do get a charging lead and that's it. Whereas with the 2400, it comes with the lead and the plug. So the plug itself has a dual USB uh, design so you can charge both lights at the same time uh, so I guess they're expecting people to buy both lights which kind of makes sense. Now the mount design is very similar to a Garmin mount uh, but it's not a Garmin mount so I've not been able to mount it to a Garmin mount perhaps someone else has if you've modified it I don't know. Uh, one thing I did do was take apart one of the mounts that came with the Parvo light and I've kind of made a GoPro uh, mount attached to it using a screw and nut and some washers. Uh, then I stuck a 3M mount onto my helmet and that was basically the mount that I used. So I did find that it, it was kind of, kind of trial and error uh, in terms of getting the beam to kind of be where your eye line is. So obviously your helmet moves and everything moves about um, and trying to make sure that that concentrated beam is exactly where you're looking. It's just trial and error and I didn't like the aftermarket Lifeline helmet mount that I bought because it came with these straps. So with the idea being that you strap it to round through the vents on your helmet and I just couldn't get it tight enough. So I gave up that and used the GoPro style mount. Um, that being said, I'm always trying to improve um, the design, shall we say, and I've now gone back to using the mount that came with that, uh, but this time cable tied onto the helmet. So just to give you a, a quick and really rough uh, kind of visual on how it's cable tied, I've just run the cable tie inside there and underneath the uh, padding and the only downside I would say to this is obviously the, <laughs> the visual aspect. You could use a black cable tie, of course. I only had white ones laying around. And obviously I would cut that off as well. This is just a temporary uh, trial and error thing. But then there is the MIPS liner. Now you have to uh, accept the possibility that the MIPS might be affected in the event of an accident. So yeah, that is worth considering. But I like the fact that by not sticking the mount on the top, I can just cut the cable tie and take it off when not in use. Um, and this mount itself is available from Chain Reaction Cycles and it does have a rocker adjustment on the top so you can adjust the angle of the light quite easily. So both these lights are claimed to be weatherproof but not waterproof, meaning you can't submerge them in water, however they should be able to stand up to the elements. The one thing I would say that is a bit rubbish is the USB port cover is this kind of very small rubber and it just doesn't seem to stay in very well. Kind of uh, easy to knock off and I guess water could get in there potentially. But I rode in the rain on the first, well, on the second ride and yeah, no problems so far and I don't expect to see any problems to be honest. So, so far my experience with night riding has been really good and I'm quite excited to get back out and do some more testing and uh, yeah, more night riding and kind of make the use of the dark evenings uh, throughout the winter. 
So yeah, if you're looking at getting some some lights and you don't want to spend a fortune, I would say definitely consider the Lifeline lights. So one thing I did forget to mention is these are the motion lights. So they're slightly more expensive um, and the idea is that they detect the motion. So on a regular conditions whilst you're riding, they're on maximum brightness. As soon as they sense that you've stopped or you're stationary, they'll reduce to the minimum brightness in order to save the battery. I haven't hit experienced this part of the light yet I just find that I turn them off so once I've got down the downhill section I'll turn off the uh, headlight and I'll put the bar mounted light on the minimum setting in order to save the batteries um, that's just how I found it easiest to operate I will try out the motion settings soon um, but one thing that I should say or should mention is that they do need motion in order to keep them cool especially on the brighter settings because they get quite hot and potentially they could overheat. So hopefully you found this video of use if you're looking at purchasing some bike lights. I highly recommend the Lifeline ones. I'd probably recommend the non-motion versions as well because they're quite a bit cheaper and you could obviously save quite a bit of money and still experience the same, the same performance uh, in terms of brightness. But yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.